I want to thank you all for showing up tonight. First off, this is an awesome place. Thank you to LA for putting all this on, inviting all these young comics out. Thank you. Thank you, LA. This is wonderful. Bring comedy out to the Rhino Valley. I can't say an RV anymore, damn it. Why not? I get to well out of town now. And I'm happy about it. Yeah. Glad to be out of town. Been spending some time on the New River though. Been having a lot of fun doing that. I learned recently about migration. How many of y'all know about migration? I've wondered my whole life, how the fuck do we have Canadian geese in Virginia? And this year I saw Canadian goslings. Anybody know what a gosling is? Yeah, I like to flex my new vocabulary words anytime I touch a microphone, so I'm, I'm just whooping them all out right now. Uh, the gosling is a little baby geese, and I saw that there were little baby Canadian geese that were born in Virginia, and it got me thinking, man. They're here on that fucking weird migration thing. When they get back to Canada as babies, do they have, like, really bad southern accents? Are they going like, yee-honk, yee-honk, back on my head, honk and how long does it take them to get fully immersed in the Canadian culture and start going, honky, honky? That's not even a joke, that's just my excuse to yell honky at you in the first 30 seconds of my success. And that's me having a stroke trying to say 30 and 90 at the same time. Oh, man. A lot of folks out here tonight. A couple ladies out here. Ladies, you ever hear about a guy, a little light breeze hits them and they get easily aroused? Dad warned you about one. Oh, oh, don't do him like that. Usually a dude laughs really hard at that, and I point my finger at him like, man, come on now. You, you, you right here with me? But you just straight up was like, no, dog, you, you're going to come before we leave this bar tonight. <laughs> that was the reaction I saw. Like, don't really get like a little nudge. You got to fucking <laughs> No more drinks for her, please. Watch out for my guy. <laughs> Anyways, you know, your dad probably warned you about a guy like that, and now I've grown up, and like, the other day it was really windy, I stepped out for work at lunch, and I got hit by a 10 mile an hour gust, and just violently came all over the whole crew. It was awesome, man. It was good. <laughs> Didn't get it on the hot dog, though, man. It was good. Save that one. Save that. Uh, but I used to wonder when I was a little kid. Anybody here fuck with Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, yeah. Anybody here seen a blustery day? No, no. He had the best fucking day while it was windy. That was it. That was the whole thesis of the episode. He was having a great day while it was windy. And I used to wonder why my little dick would get so hard while I watched that. But now I know. We've got these guys over here giggling about a little baby dick, too. I'm gonna call the cops telling you're pedophiles. <laughs> Fucking weirdos, I'm telling. Found it out, found it out, found it out. Oh man, this winter I had to get a Carhartt hoodie. And the weird thing about a Carhartt hoodie is a lot of times hipsters wear them and you can't tell if they're blue collar. And I'm blue collar and hipster, and it just sucks all the hipster right out of me as soon as I put it on. I go from wearing these that have been in line for the Trump sneakers, right? But I love it. It's a little bit tougher than all the rest of my clothes, you know. These tie-dyes can't stand up to fucking shit, right? And uh, when I need these clothes that are tougher, and Carhartt only has three natural enemies. That's bleach, mustard, and cum. And I finished that hot dog on lunch and got all three on it in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> Rough. My grandma was in the room too. It was a fucking sight to see. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, Nana's the one that bought me that, that Carhartt hoodie. She bought it online. I really hate online shopping. It takes the shoplifting out of it. Am I right? That's right. It's a predominantly white room that fucking gets y'all going, doesn't it? All right? I sat in the black room the other day, got so quiet to hear a hair pick drop. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about, white boy? Anyways, recently got, welcome guys. You can, 
you made it, you made it just in time, but not get hit by some Jews. <laughs> you got to shut my load already, almost. Don't worry, there's nine more coming at you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a good breeze. It's a good draft in here, too. But anyway, recently TJ Maxx, speaking of shoplifting, TJ Maxx said that they were going to institute body cameras to help deal with theft in their stores, right? And they got trained by the same people that trained the police on how to use their body cameras. They've been running that program for about six months now, and I just read another study on it. They come out with all the results. Theft is at an all-time high, and they found six black men dead at a TJ Maxx. And none of the footage was recovered at all. <laughs> Damn it, man. It's dark. That's a dark joke right there. People like it in certain rooms, but other times, I have to go back to old faith, man. My buddy called me the other day. He's like, man, should a statue of Bill Clinton be erected? And I was like, man, I don't think he'd have it any other way. Where else are you going to keep that large, robust saxophone? That's right, those are my people. They know Bill Clinton played the saxophone. Did that joke at Virginia Tech in front of some 20-somethings, like real young 20-somethings, and they were like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yuppies. Man, since y'all didn't like that last joke, I'm just going to keep it on a real nice pulse right now and talk about homeless people for a minute. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, recently folks have come out and they said you should address homeless people as unhoused. And I think homeless and unhoused is rubbing soft on wounds. It's very, very obvious to those folks, all right? But I've come up with a solution. I believe we should just address them as unhappy campers. Right? Right? That covers a lot of bases. Don't hurt nobody's feelings. Right? And I've been an Eagle Scout my whole, since I was 18. Not my whole life. I was going to bust that one out. I haven't had my car in my whole life. But I'm an Eagle Scout. And I know that nobody ties a tourniquet and takes too much medicine and an afternoon nap while they're happy camping. But I'm here to tell you, if I was an unhappy camper, I believe that might turn me into a happy camper for a little while. Damn it, man. Nobody likes heroin jokes either. I'm going to have to get really, really happy with you guys. Because millions of people travel all over the world to get here to Appalachia to camp here, and they get here by happenstance. That's a really sad statement right there in and of itself. But I found a way to make it a little bit better. Just a little bit better. If you think about Bob Ross painting them, right? It can make you feel a little bit better about it. I don't do a really good Bob Ross impression, but I'm going to need you to go along with it. Just imagine you're listening to Bobby Dwayne Jr. the third, Ross. Right? And so what we're going to do here now is we're going to mix up a little bit of refrigerator box paint. Right? We're going to take some of this rustic brown here, dabble it up here on our thing. We're going to come down here with a little bit of, hmm, let's see here. Do we want orange or blue? Do we want Home Depot or do we want Lowe's today? Hmm. Just a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other. Maybe they've got both. Today we're going to mix it up. And you know, you just take your blade and you get a little good dab on there. You come over here to your underpasses and you just take these little happy accidents and you just pull them down. One, two. Oh, there's a pair over here, one, two. And now you just let your hand wander because the farther you go, the more comfortable they are. <laughs> now I've got you laughing at it now. And that's fucked up. And you hear me talking about Bob Ross, but when you zoom in, I mean zoom out, uh, I hear it and I see Uncle Sam, don't you guys? But speaking of happy accidents, my son just turned 11. <laughs> Shout out that guy for making it this long with me as it pops, right? <laughs> right? Shout out that kid. They come up to me the other day, worried he's going to be way smarter than me. He come up to me the other day and he's like, Dad, what's the deal with four arms? We only got two of them. He's like, damn, slick. I can't get shit past you. <laughs> but anyway, I got me thinking after that. I was like, man, I'm going to have to work real hard on keeping four skins away from him. Because I can explain one away with the doctor, but I do not have words for the other three. 
And he texted me the other day. And he was like, Dad, I can't text you right now. I'm at dinner with Mom. And I was like, son, I'm high as fucking driving right now. You can try a little harder, pussy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. I told him I love him and have a good night. But that's not funny. That's not funny at all. Not funny one bit. Oh, man. Got any smokers in the crowd here? Any pot smokers? Hey, yo, one dude raised his hand. That is the one crowd I can usually count on getting a scream out of. We got three people raising their hands. This is awesome. What's five times seven now that we're in math class? We're doing this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't work that hard on that. Anyway, I love smoking pot. I got a body like a back row my two pot holes right here in the middle of my lungs, boy. Love filling them babies up with probably mud. Probably nothing good. Oh man. I love getting wake and baked. That was a big burp. That was two of them. Hell yeah. Woo! Getting rough up here. Damn it, man. I love waking and bacon, but I think we should rename it into getting stoned. I'm having a little issue. Man. Man. And, uh, 
Recently, I've been having a lot of fun dating the press girls. We got any press girls in the house? Woo! Shout out your meds for getting you out of the house today. Thank you guys for coming. Really appreciate you guys. But I love the press girls. They all carry around a little vape, and they're just like it. You just hit it till it dies, then go find you another flavor. <laughs> it's good when you laugh the hardest, let the joke out. That, that's love right there. That's love right there. Shout out you guys in the corner. Oh man, speaking of mental health, uh, recently I was giving girls PTSD. Man, they were calling me. No trauma, no stress, just pretty thoughts on my sweet dick. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. You had a too if you can yell on my cat. <laughs> anyway, my favorite all time depressed girl was a blind Disney adult. And with that right there, can you really tell where the handicap lies, right? Y'all my people. Y'all rode with me through the roughest storm ever tonight. Thank you guys. <laughs> but this Disney adult, anytime we had sex, man, I had to do this impression of Mickey. What about Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse, yes. And it sounded a little something like this. Oh boy! You like that bird, don't you? That dick's gonna make you goofy, huh? Send you straight to Pluto! Good Googling for the way! Because anytime I broke that character, I sounded nothing like her husband, and I immediately had indigestion. <laughs> Taco Bell that day, and would throw up on her, and she'd make me watch a Disney movie. <laughs> I don't have time for that, guys. I gotta write y'all some more jizz jokes. <laughs> and if you guys had fun tonight <laughs> through this rough storm, follow me online, TikTok or Instagram at the Mullet Influencer. And thank you guys for coming out and supporting LA. 